Hello again, my name is Michał Orzek and welcome to another tutorial. A couple weeks ago I created an online poll where I asked you what kind of content would you like to see more on our blog. So, as you can see, results are pretty much clear. Most of you think that learning under Lenging is awesome, and I must agree. And by the way, thank you for positive feedback we get from you guys. We hope it's just the beginning. Ok, let's get started. Today we are gonna take a look at pre-made animations, a physics simulation. We're gonna use a physics engine in 3D Studio Max to make the following object animations. Like you've probably seen here. What we can see is a quite nice animation of a falling and breaking rocks, bricks and so on. At first I was like, hey, nice physics they have here. Game engine calculates objects, position and rotation at real time. Everything seems to be dynamic. But wait a second, isn't it just a single mesh? A skeletal mesh with some pre-made animations? Yep, it is. And I must say it looks really nice. And there's a lot of such skeletal meshes in here. Basically, all breaking, cracking, flying pieces are simulated in other applications. This for example is awesome. Ok, so now you can ask yourself, why do you want to use pre-made animation to fake physics in a scene if you already have physics engine built in? I tell you why. First of all, you have more control over what's happening with the simulated objects and you're sure that every time you play it, it is the same. So you can plan your cinematic. Secondly, it's cheaper than calculating physics in real time. We don't have any calculations going on. It has already been simulated, so we get position and rotation keyframes as a result. But, like everything in this world, there are pros and cons. For example, you are limited to animation you created and it cannot be changed relatively quickly. Take this example. You change your mind and this scene should have more, mm, I don't know, boxes in the middle of the floor. And now what? Animation doesn't fit. There are more bad sides of using pre-made animation, but let's leave it for now and focus on actual making such stuff. Alright, let's jump to 3D Studio Max and let me show you what we are gonna be doing. Ok, do you recognize that scene? It's Unreal Engine started level. What I did is I exported couple objects from editor into a single FBX file. I will show you quickly how to do that. Just open starter or any level Select objects you want to export and click File, Export Selected. Pick a path and hit Save. What you get is a single FBX file that you can easily import into your 3D application. Alright, let's check the animation. Nothing really complex here. I'm using MassFX for the simulation. And MassFX is a physics engine built in 3D Studio Max since version 2012, as far as I remember. Ok, let's start from scratch and I'll show you how I did this. Let's reset the 3D Studio Max scene. First, let's import FBEX with all objects we exported from the editor. Ok, let's create a camera so we can back quickly to this position. Let's create a box and align it to the statue. We are gonna place it above so it is intersecting with statue while I'm dragging it along Z axis. I'm using Alt A shortcut to align by the way. Alright, now we need to tell 3D Studio Max we want this box to fall. To do so, we're gonna use Mass Effects tool. Open up Animation, Simulation Mass Effects, Utilities and Show Mass Effects tool. You can also open Toolbar. Right click on the free space and choose Mass Effects tool. I already docked the window on the left so I have better access. For those who never used Mass Effects, I really recommend to check its possibilities first. Alright, we wanted these objects to interact with each other. First, we need to define which objects are dynamic and which are static. Mass Effects supports three types of rigid bodies. Static, dynamic and kinematic. Static are just static objects like walls, floors and so on. Dynamic objects are controlled entirely by the simulation, and that's what we are going to use. Kinematic objects 
can be animated using standard methods, but we won't use it for an, our example. Okay, so we can easily say that floor, table and two chairs are static. These objects won't move during the simulation. Let's select and set them as static. Now, both statue and box are dynamic. We want the gravity to affect their motion. They will also collide with static objects. Let's select and set them as dynamic. Alright, so we are almost ready to run simulation. As you can see, each object is now inside a bounding shape. It is simplified an auto-generated mesh that is going to be used during simulation. In Unreal Engine, we have something similar. It's called a collision mesh. Looking at chairs, we can say that collision shape isn't perfect and it won't work. It won't allow objects to fall onto seat. I will show you how to fix that in a second. As you notice, 3D Studio Max has also applied a modifier on the top of the object's stack that basically define object's properties used for the simulation. You can change here, for example, mass, friction, or use one of the presets. Let's leave it for now and let's see our simulation. Go to Simulation tab and hit Start Simulation. And here we go. With just a few clicks we have a nice animation. Now let's reset the simulation and let's play around with the settings. We can move our box to different spot or change its rotation. Let's test this out. The nice thing about the mass effects that is quite fast. If you want your simulation to be more accurate, you can increase the number of substeps. Of course, using a higher value slows down the simulation. Maybe it is not so noticeable in this simple scene. Ok, I mentioned about collision meshes and the precision. Let's fix our chair. Under physical shapes rollout, we can see shape type property. Now it is set to convex type. But look what happens when I change it to the original type. Chair's bounding shape is gone now. Now it uses its original mesh for calculations. Let me quickly show you the difference and why it's so important. Let's bring back the shape type to convex. Let's make the box to fall directly on seat. Just like that. As you saw, that wasn't what we expected. Box is bouncing off invisible surface. Ok, now let's change the shape type to original and see what happens. Yeah, now we are talking. The simulation is more accurate. Alright, I really recommend to play around with these settings before moving on. Ok, I loaded my previous file. Now, since simulation is ready, we need to bake it so we have position and rotation keyframes. Let's click Bake All. Just look at the timeline. Each frame has its own keyframe now. And by the way, I extended the timeline to 220 frames so we have more room for our animation. You can do that by right clicking on the play icon or just hit the time configuration button below. Adjust end time value to fit your simulation. We can also collapse the slack since we don't need mass effects modifier anymore. Alright. Let's go ahead and bring that animation into Unreal Engine. We need to add bones to our dynamic objects so they can be animated in Unreal Engine as skeletal meshes. So let's create systems and let's pick bones. We're gonna need a single bone so let's delete this one. Let's call it bone underscore box. Now, let's align it to position and orientation in X, Y and Z axis with pivot point of our box and hit OK. It is important to choose pivot, not center of the object. Let's do the same with statue bone. Let's also give it a name. Ok, now our problem is that we have box and statue animations, but there's no bones animation. We need that for skeletal meshes, of course. So, we need somehow to transfer that animation to corresponding bones. And it's not that easy as it sounds. It is not the matter of selecting and linking bone with objects. 
You won't be able to transfer animation keyframes from one object to another that way. Even if you collapse transform in motion tab under trajectories rollout, it won't work. Unlinked bone stays at its place even if it has keyframes. One of the problem is that MassFX created extra position and rotation controller. So let me show you two solutions I came up with. Before we start, let's get rid of that MassFX transform controller. Let's increase sample range to our end time and hit collapse. Okay, now we don't have extra transform controller. Okay, first solution is a manual of copying keyframes from animated objects to bone without linking. Select the object and open Curve Editor or Dopeship if you like, then go to Transform and right click on Position. Choose Copy. Select the corresponding bone and paste keyframe to bone's position controller. Do the same with the rotation. As you can see it works, but it's a pain in the ass to transfer that animation. The second solution I found is to collapse animation with an amazing max script, thanks to Martin Bright, hope I pronounced his surname correctly, we are able to collapse animation even if objects are linked together. Script can be found on scriptspot.com. I provide link in the description. So let me show you this. I have box bone linked with box so it moves with it. I select bone, run the max script and boom, animation is transferred. Just unlink the bone and we are done. I'm sure you already forgot first solution and started downloading that script. Alright, so we're almost ready to go. All we need to do is to add a skin modifier to our objects and add bones. Let's do that. I'll delete box and statue animation so we have only bone animation. Okay, so we've got exactly the same animation like we got from mass effect simulation. Sweet. Now we are ready to export scanned objects into Unreal Engine. Okay, let's see that animation in Unreal Engine. Pretty cool. Okay, what I did is I imported that skeletal meshes and placed it into scene at 000. You can trigger that animation in Blueprint or just select Skeletal Mesh and under Animation Rollout choose Animation Mode, use Animation Asset and... What the? Ah, yeah, Achievement Unlocked. Okay, that more or less covers the idea how to bring pre-made physics simulation into Unreal Engine. But let's back really quickly to the beginning where I showed you the elemental demo with some serious physics and falling rocks. You could say now, I know how to bring falling objects into Unreal, but how to make such geometry? So, it's easy. If you are lucky, you have access to some professional plugins like Rayfire or a cheap solution Demolition Master. Their possibilities and workflows are amazing. But there are also free max scripts you can use. I recommend Fracture Voronoi. There's a link in the description. It's a very straightforward solution where you pick an object, set some values and just break it into pieces. I like it. Let me show you that. Let's break that box into pieces. You can change the number of parts. Just play around with the settings. Click break when you're ready. Now, you can set these objects as a mass effects rigid bodies and run physics simulation like we did earlier. But there's more. When I was preparing this tutorial, I thought the whole process should be faster and easier. Now, it's really time-consuming process where you need to create bones, align them, add a skin modifier to all objects, then add bones to that skin and so on. Only simulation is the fun part, for me at least. So, I decided to develop a script that will make it for me. I know, I'm not a programmer. But I'm also too lazy to make the same steps multiple times. So I decided to learn MaxScript. And let me show you something. 
I'm currently developing this little friend. What it does, it takes your current selection and boom. Now, each object has a bone which is aligned to object's pivot point. A skin modifier with that bone has automatically been applied. The only thing is missing is the collapse transform functionality. So object has animation but it is not transferred to the bone. But I'm working really hard to make it happen. So if you are interested in such script, just let me know. And of course, if you have better ideas, techniques, or just want to share your opinion, write a comment. Anyway, thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to check our website where you can find more interesting stuff like other tutorials, Unreal Engine content and more. Cheers!